Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel Tech with Eddie, which is all about integrating your ID devices with your preferred home automation ecosystem. You all know very well by now that my videos are all about using DIY platforms and their plugins to integrate with my not so certified ID devices into Apple HomeKit. You know, the most important thing here is to get the same rich home automation experience by spending less. So please do take a look and don't feel shy to hit the like and subscribe button to follow along. In today's video, we will integrate the PlayStation 4 into Apple HomeKit. As always on my continuous quest uh, to do that. And um, I also do know that the PlayStation 5 is out and it's released and hopefully the developer will update the support and lucky you, you've got your hands on one of those devices. Now with this plugin, you can put the PlayStation into standby mode as well as uh, turn on specific games using just switches. You can add them as well to some scenes and most important as well, this is for us the parents who have kids in particular that love gaming like we used to and we still love to but it's always hard. It's a hard time basically to get the kids or us disconnected from the gaming console. So to get more control on the device using Siri or even add it to automations as well as use timers to turn off the device. So no more screaming or shouting, no more sulky faces. Everybody was warned when the gaming console is going off. So for all of this integration to work with Apple HomeKit, you will need obviously a Sony PlayStation. In my case, I'll be using uh, the version four and you prefer home automation ecosystem. I'll be using Hoops, you can also use HomeBridge. I've broken down the videos into three parts with the timestamps in the description. They are number one, pairing the PlayStation, two, adding the PlayStation, three, adding the games, and four, automation ideas. So don't forget to stay till the end to know which video is coming up next week. So let's not waste time, like I always say, and let's jump into this tutorial. Alrighty, let's log into our user interface. And the first thing you want to do is go into terminal and uh, let's visit the first link to pair the PlayStation with Apple HomeKit. So we need to install a command called the PS4-Waker and also at the same time I've kept my PlayStation on. So you want to make sure the, the device is turned on to uh, ensure the, uh, the pairing uh, happens. So let's, do the, let's uh, go ahead and copy the first command to commence with the pairing. So I'm going to type sudo paste enter. Once that's completed, let's type ps4-waker. Now what you're going to do is, uh, it's going to ask you for uh, the access to the PlayStation. So you need to download the PS4 second screen app. So let's open up that and you're going to see the, uh, the PS4, uh, which is your device and the ps4-waker. So let's tap on the ps4-waker. And you should see uh, the credentials already uh, added and it will ask you to go to the device to uh, add in the pin code. And what we're going to do is tap over here and we're going to go into settings, mobile app, and we're going to tap on add device. And we're just going to Tap the code that is over here, 9508-6364, enter. So you should see a message saying that the companion app has been added successfully. Now, before we, just to make sure the pairing is working, let's type PS4-Waker just to see it can connect. So you can see it connects to the device, it can log in, so we have a success. If you go to the page, you can see you can run additional commands as well. So let's go and put it into standby mode and wake it up again. So the command is working. It is going into the standby mode. Let it complete its pro uh, the process and then we'll wake it up again. Give it a couple of seconds. Let's type ps4-waker and we will need to hit enter. 
so there yeah so yeah it does take some time to cycle up uh, back again it does not happen instantly so uh, you want you do want to take note of that it takes around about 30 seconds for it to start back again but the good news is it does respond to the wake up uh, command and using the companion app it logs in straight into your user uh, interface but before we go into the uh, adding the plugin let's copy this line over here on the top which is your credentials so you at the end of this you want to add it copy this which will add it to the uh, configuration of the plugin so make sure you copy this command save it somewhere safe so i've got a notepad over here and uh, i'm just going to save it over here so this one will be used to add in the credential information into the configuration so now let's go and add in the plugin. Let's go to plugins. Let's search for PS4. Hit install. And once that's completed, let's hit on settings. And uh, let's go to the second link to copy the configuration, which is over here. Let's copy, let's select all, paste. And since I have one PlayStation, I'm just gonna leave it as one. Now what you're gonna do is, uh, uh, I'm going to add in the credentials that I pasted. That's this one, copy. I'm gonna paste it. I do know that my ISP is 86.5. Now for the serial and the model, you need to um, look up online based on your PS4 where this information is uh, printed. So I, I've spotted mine right under the, the player and I've got the information here. So I'm just gonna copy and I'm gonna put in the model. Now before we go ahead, I'm just going to check it. I'm just going to name this PS4. I'm going to hit save. And we have an error. Okay. Make sure you check your code. Hit save. And we go to reset. Once the bridge service comes online, we should be able to test it. So let's go to accessories. We should see the PlayStation over here. So let me go back and open it up. So you see it's on away. So let's tap on it. Okay, so it responds using the switch of going into standby mode. So we successfully configured the plugin. Now, uh, let it be into standby mode. What we'll do is we'll go in and add in a game. So settings, to do that, we have uh, scroll all the way down. We add in this command of apps. So the game comes in as a switch. And I'm just going to put a comma here. I'm gonna paste this. So the game I want to add is my God of War. So I'm gonna call it G-O-W. Now for the ID, we just type over here, God of War. And let's go to the PlayStation Store. So this is the game I have. To get the ID, you go to the search bar and you want to, let me expand this one over here. You want to get this ID over here, this, which commences with C. So you want to copy this entire thing between the dashes all this information, control C, go into my configuration and I'm going to paste it over here. So let's hit save. And we have another error. Okay, and that's the one. Save, one more mistake. Select, save, let's restart. Now I'm going to put my web browser here. 
my PlayStation is into standby mode. Give it a couple of seconds. So let's open up the switch over here. You can see we've got the God of War game as a switch as well as the PS4 on button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the camera over here so you can, can get a look. And I will go to accessories and I'm going to turn on the game. So I've clicked on the God of War. And you will see that it logs into the game directly. And then the switch goes off. And this let me detect the controller. So we have the game on and uh, if we want it we can turn off the gaming console. So yes, so we we were able to add in a game as well as add in the PlayStation to Apple HomeKit. Now let's go and look for some quick uh, home automation ideas. So we've got the PlayStation up and running. We've got the delay switch that we configured uh, last week with the Apple TV. Now let's run two uh, simple automations to make sure they work. And maybe you can use shortcuts as well. Sky's the limit. And for the home automation ideas, it's very simple. You can add in a scene, your gaming scene and your particular um, game that you want to turn on. So you could go to custom and you could call it a game scene, add accessories. Uh, let me add the PlayStation 4 or I like a God of War. I can uh, my panels and I can even set the sound to a certain level and I can turn off my other lights and then from there I can switch it on. My panels, I can change the color to whatever desired one. So let's say red and I can increase the volume for both as much as I need so and then that's a scene my gaming scene and then also what I can do is I can go to automation click add on necessaries control and we can go to this TVPS this is the same uh, delay switch that we had used with the Apple TV say next when it turns off and we can type on Yes. Four. Next. It's turned off. Done. So we can run a simple switch of, of uh, 15 minutes. The PlayStation goes off. And then you can also, based on your location or when you leave, you can put it into standby mode or any time of the day. So the uh, options are uh, sky is the limit. So there we are. Uh, we were able to add in the plugins, configure it, and add in a game as well as the PlayStation, as, all, as well as uh, uh, add in a simple timer to turn off the device. Finally, there we are. Collaboratively, we have added the PlayStation as well as the timer switch to run some automations into Apple HomeKit. So next time, putting the kids or disconnecting yourself from the gaming console is just a switch away. Now, to keep all of this going, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Y'all know very well, cause that's the real motivator. That's the real driver. The more the merrier for bringing all of this content for us. And if there's something I can help with, don't be shy to leave a comment down below. I'd be glad to assist. And don't forget also to visit the developer's webpage to give them your support as well. And that's by giving them a star. Now, next week, I will show you on how to set up your ultimate home automation server using MQTT and uh, Zigbee. So stay tuned for that as well. So my friends, until the next time, stay safe, have a nice day, cheers, and happy automation.